So, you know, I remember watching you in the early days because you were so good. You yeah. were 16 and you were so good on yeah. the phone. It was insane. But I knew you could slip 100%, real quick. 100%. And, you know, they they say uh, we, we, we don't get what we want. We get who we are. Yes. And so although I did want some of these things and the car and the money mm -hmm. and all these things, I who I was in my core, there was a deep feeling of worthlessness. And I did so much self-sabotaging, even though I was put in these positions, so much self-sabotaging. I feel like I didn't stop the self-sabotage for until I was probably 33. Hey, welcome back to the show. Uh, this is 25 years in the making. I'm gonna unpack with you today an extraordinary individual to understand how he did say a billion dollars in the first 10 years of his business and more importantly, how they did a billion dollars plus in the last four, but there's a deeper backstory and a message and a meaning you need to hear. Kevin, thank you for joining My me My brother, the show. thank you for having me. Yes, all right, so this is 25 years in the making, man. Seriously. I've known you since you were 16 years yeah, old. that's insane. Kevin, someone's listening right now and you know, literally I see it every day and I know yeah. you do as well, right? It doesn't matter what country I'm in. It doesn't matter who I'm DMing. It doesn't matter the one-on-ones in the hallways of events. Someone will walk up and say, man, I just feel like I've just been so beaten up, right? Yeah. I'm tired, this yeah. market, right? And I am reminded of how I was raised. Yeah. I know you have a story. And I think before we get into the $265 million in sales last year and this you know, beautiful team you built, I think it'd be cool for you just to share the early stage of your life. And then let's get into all the rock and roll and it. stuff. But I, you, I just am convinced you couldn't be here if it wasn't for all of that. 100%. And I think that that is the, the most important thing to do is to really learn how to dance through that energy and understand that it's through the struggle that we're developing strength. I think the lie is that it's all supposed to be fun and games and sunshine. Yeah. And I've learned that it's the battles that I've gone through. It's that, you know, they say battle scars are attractive. Yes. Yes. So, you know, the, the fire is where you get refined. And I'm grateful for that fire. You yeah. know, I grew up um, not a rags to riches story. It was like a riches to rags and the journey back to the riches. Um, I didn't know what my dad did growing up. We lived in, I was born in Oakland, 1982, moved to East Los Angeles. Like Boyle Heights was the upgrade from where I lived yeah, on I Fruitvale. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, and my dad was, uh, they moved first of all to Oakland so that my dad could kind of get away of some of the trouble they were getting into. Like my mom and dad were, I like to think of them both as like injured lovebirds, yeah. you know, trying to, trying, to, trying to strengthen themselves together. But the streets continued to call my dad and growing up, it was like a fast life. Mm -hmm. We were always on vacation. I was going to private schools, he, nice cars. And uh, it was a really fast life. And when I was around five or six years old, I remember my mom coming into the room and telling me like, hey, look, uh, your dad's gonna be going away for a little bit. I'm like, dude, didn't even say goodbye. Like, what happened? Yeah. He's gonna go to school. And so the next time you see him, it's gonna be behind a glass because he's going to uh, become a fireman. So for safety and all the smoke that he's around, we're gonna be talking to your dad through glass yeah and pretty witty it's good yeah 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 so i spent my sixth seventh eighth ninth birthdays uh visiting my dad in different federal penitentiaries and i wouldn't change that for the world because he would write me letters and when i would go and visit him you know it was an interesting energy you're going mm -hmm. through security mm -hmm. my dad it, I, I knew he was in prison i'm like wow but when i would talk to him he'd say hey don't think that i'm dying in here I'm learning, I'm, I'm getting healthier. He looked good, he's, he's getting closer to God. So at a very early age, I had a beautiful example that it doesn't matter where you're at. You are not a product of your environment. You're a product of your goals and your mindset. My dad was sending me Tony Robbins books from prison. And so um, we went from having this great life and it was still a great life, but we went immediately on welfare. You know, and I remember being in, in elementary school and man, this one moment I can remember a friend in school was behind us in line and it was a girl that I had a crush on and my mom was about to pay with food stamps and um, 
she pulled out her checkbook instead. And I knew that if she wrote that check, that check was not going to go through. And I told her that it, it was okay. You know, and those are some of the painful things that I would go through that, again, if you're going through something difficult, when you're going through hell, as the saying goes, keep going because yes. that's how you learn. That's where my fire comes from. So every day that I wake up now, I already know, like, this is the day to break through. And so fortunately, in the early 90s, my mom went to a seminar and she found you guys, yep. right? We had never had this exposure. We were from the streets. So by finding this environment and she, you you were at her, I, her interview. I, listen, I this mean, is like 93. Your, right. Like I remember walking by uh, then sales manager, my brother-in-law, Steve Belmont, yeah. and, and he's like, I'm interviewing this gal. You should meet her. He goes, I just, I, I just feel bad for her. He goes, but she's got like this spirit about her, this energy about her yeah. that's really attractive. And I think- you know, we've hired crazier people. Let's go. And I remember walking <laughs> in and like giving her a hug and she just had all this life and energy. Yeah. But like, but I knew like I could see she was crying in the interview. Yeah. Like, I want this job. Well, what you may not know is around that same time, me, my brother, my sister get sent to Ohio because my dad gets out of prison. Yeah. So now my mom's all alone. Yeah. And now my mom has this op opportunity that when we get back, mm -hmm. life is going to be different. So yeah. when we left... We left on welfare. Mm -hmm. We go to Ohio. We come back. My mom bought a home mm -hmm. in Newport Beach. She uh, was dating this amazing person. She had her dream car, which was a Saab. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember. I'm like culture uh, shocked, but yeah. I'm like, like great, what my, happened? great. My mom became a, became a drug dealer that, too. I was just thinking great. the same thing. Perfect. Yes. And she shows me her vision board. She shows me what she's been doing while she's been gone. And she's like, I got this job at this place and she's selling seminars. I'm like, what? Yeah. And so fast forward, I thought that was great. I was happy for her. How old were you then? I was 16. Okay, so this is right about the time we met. Yes. Yeah. And I thought it was cool. I was happy for her, but I'm a skater. I'm into hip hop. I'm doing my thing. I'm kind of on the same trajectory as my dad. Yeah. And about a year and a half after being home, in my junior year of high school, I get the news that I'm gonna be a father. And I had been my mom's role play partner for about a year and a half mm -hmm. s uh, as she was cold calling real estate agents. So uh, I went to the sales manager, Steve, at, at y your brother-in-law, yep. and I said, look, dude, uh, Dude, I, I remember you walked in, you were just <laughs> like this, like young, cocky, energetic. <laughs> and I, like, I see, I, I see in you, me when I was 16, yeah. just, I had a Mohawk and you yeah. were a skater, yeah, but you totally. know, like, Same thing. but like you had so much energy, how would the, like you had so much bravado. Where did that come from? That was came, that all just BS? That, that came from my dad and that came from my influences at that time, which was uh Jay-Z uh, Nas, like I grew up in, yeah. in hip hop culture, which hip hop is about affirmations, yes. you know, and especially yes. in my area of the early nineties, when you listen to the old, old school hip hop, mm -hmm. it was about speaking things into existence. Yes. So I knew I was meant for something. I just didn't have the right structure. Yeah. I was going down a path. Yeah. I was like the worst, the you, worst drug dealer there was because you know there's a there's a there's a rule of never get high off your own supply. Mm -hmm. I in high school had like a break even method because I was buying it, and so my method was more like, hey, look, if I'm at least selling it and I'm breaking even, then that's okay. And yeah. so I was not on a very good trajectory. No, yeah, but now, I had game. You no, you had tremendous game, <laughs> and and but we own, you know you know. Back then you got exposed to people like Bill Mitchell, right? Yeah. And Bill, you know, God bless him, one of my greatest mentors, you know, he would always draw this line and he'd say, Tom, there's a really thin line. You walk it every single day and it's the eye of integrity. Mm. And he's, man, he said, you, you go just a little bit to the right or a yeah. little bit to the left. You're out of integrity. And he said, yeah, it may not hurt you in the moment. He said, but if you stay on mm. that path, how fast you slip away from, right. you know, your higher self, your true yeah. self, the, the self that you want to be. Mm. So, you know, I remember watching you in the early days because you were so good. You yeah. were 16 and you were so good on yeah. the phone. It was insane. But I knew you could slip 100%, real quick. 100%. And you know they they say uh we 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 don't get what we want. We get who we are. Yes. And so although I did want some of these things and the car and the mm -hmm. money and mm -hmm. all these things, I 
who I was in my core, there was a deep feeling of worthlessness. And I did so much self-sabotaging, even though I was put in these positions, so much self-sabotaging. I feel like I didn't stop the self-sabotage for until I was probably 33. There was yeah. so much right. digging that I had to understand and so much getting in my own way. But um, those that college, so I went to the sales manager and mm -hmm. I probably told him I'll work for free, give me a couple weeks. Yeah. And I got the job. Um, I got the job at the very bottom, of course, selling yeah. cassette tapes. Yeah. I got to sell the cassette tapes yes. and yes. it was like a $50 rip per deal. And then I got up to selling business planning coaching and then the next level of coaching. Mm -hmm. And that changed my life. That was the greatest college I possibly could have had. And I, just in fairness, you earned all of that. You yeah. earned it because you did follow like, okay, tell me what I have to do and I'm yes. going to follow it verbatim. Yeah. And, and what I always respected about you, even early on, it was very obvious. And same thing with your mom, like, like, you know, we all have these scars, right? Scars mm -hmm. from life experiences, scars from, you know, you know, mistakes that we made or, you yeah. know, things, things that we maybe should have gone right. And we went left, but I, I just kept seeing in your heart of hearts that that's what was always impressive to me. I'm like, man, if this kid can just, yeah. if he could just grow up and like not hurt anybody or hurt himself along the way, he's going to become someone really special. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, it means a lot that you spoke that into me because yes. even my own father, you know, when I found out I was having a kid, obviously he's the first person that I called. Yeah. And the, I'll never forget his very first words. I'm like, dad, you're not going to believe what happened. I'm super freaked out. What do I, what do, I do? Yeah. Like, What's going on? I'm like, I got this girl pregnant. Yeah. His exact words were, do you have any idea how fucked you are? <laughs> Because that was his relationship <laughs> right, to fatherhood. Right, exactly. Right? And exactly. my mentor at the time was like, look, man, this is the opportunity for, and that was a, an incredible, the, the second person I called was one of my mom's top clients. Mm -hmm. And he lived in Seattle. He would buy his cars in Newport Beach and at Fletcher Jones, because Fletcher Jones would get him first and he would leave them at our house. Mm -hmm. And of course I took those cars out. And um, then he would ship them up to Seattle, yeah. and that was Thatch. Shout out Thatch. Shout out to Thatch. Yeah. And he, I was 17 years old, and he was the one who was like, look, this is your shot. Yeah. This is your opportunity yeah. to be the dad that you never had. And I got the job. I started working my way up. And, um, you know, you, the way you spoke into me has a lot to do with how I am with my team, how I am with my kids, because there was one defining moment, and I brought it for you, where that defining moment from the time I was born until I was probably 20 years old was a moment where I was like, damn, because I had never been put on a pedestal, so I brought it for you. Okay, so I have my old school flip, and you walked in with a cassette player, <laughs> I, I and I'm like, I'm like, I oh, cassette right, player. Are you ready for this? I don't know, but I'm, I'm ready. That was a, de a defining moment. Superstar Retreat. That was in Marriott, front of 3, Desert Springs. I remember. I remember. How I'm sorry. 
Kevin Gillette. Yeah. <laughs> God bless Kevin Gillette. Work with me forever, KG. Yeah. So, so why? What about that moment? Well, because you know when you when when somebody sees something in you that you didn't see, right? That's that's the ultimate definition of a coach. Yeah. Right. That is the ability to see a future bigger than an individual can even see for themselves. That is the ultimate secret weapon of a coach. Everybody's on their own trajectory though, because I did not truly get into my rhythm until I was probably 33 years old. And it was just a battle. I mean, right. no matter what, it was a battle. Right. I would make, you know, that was when I was 18. By the time I was 21 working there, I was making $20,000 a month. That's insane. Yeah. And I was spending $21,000 a month. Which is also insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I went through a lot of ups and downs Yeah. until, you know, I got into real estate 2003, 2004. I did okay. Um, but I wasn't really being myself. And so mm -hmm. then I left the business in 2007. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. I, I felt really inauthentic and I never wanted to come back. So I got into personal development and trying to be like a life coach guy. Um, and that felt fake. You know, there was so much of this, like, you know, you know how that, that saying goes, you were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within you. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I had this ability, but there was just these, these battles and this inner story that was so loud. Um, it was just a roller coaster. Yeah. And then the defining moment was really in 2011. Um, my best friend in the world passes away and I go down a very, very, very dark rabbit hole. You know, that year I probably sold five homes, average sales price, 500,000. I'm broke as a joke. And then January, 2012, my dad passed away and my dark depression went, uh, and turned into anger and a fire, mm -hmm. um, mixed with my relationship was on the rocks with my wife, my daughter, I had a daughter who was three months old at the time. And, um, my wife and I split up. My drinking was getting out of hand. And next thing you know, I'm living in an apartment right around the corner from here and I'm by myself. And for the first time in my life, it was like, this is on you, dude. Yeah. I sp I'm spending so much time blaming and having a pity party. And it was simple. Like, what do you want to do? And so once again, what do I do? I go to my coach. Um, and I told Thatch, I was like, dude, I'm leaving this business. I need your help. Um, I have a big vision. I know I'm meant to do something. I feel like I, I, I should create this kind of personal development thing. And he said, what makes you think that's not real estate? I was separating the yeah. two. Yeah. So Case, when I began to think of the vision, was a place that was going to mix all of my passions, which was personal development, life coaching, skateboarding, hip hop, architecture, um, and something that I could have that was my own. Yes. Um, something that was authentically authentic. you, yeah. that you didn't have to fake, that every day you just woke up and just, you could be Kev. Totally. Because the first 10 years I spent in real estate, I was really having a split personality disorder. Yeah. Yeah. I was being the guys that I saw on the panel, suit and tie. Every word that came out of my mouth was a script. Yeah. And then at five, six o'clock after I'm done calling Fizbo's and expireds, mm -hmm. beanies on, I'm being myself. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that's what you had to do. Yeah. And so long story short, literally it's like January, 2012, I write out the dream vision. And what, Thatch asked me the question and he said, if you could have it anyway, what does it look like? And I'd never thought about real estate like that. Subconsciously, I was just in it to survive. Mm -hmm. So we get what we focus on. I'm just surviving. Right. You know, I never had a year that was bigger than like maybe a buck 80, mm -hmm. 200, mm -hmm. which is in Southern California, still survival mode. Mm -hmm come up with the vision. I make a five-year plan to earn a million dollars and build my dream company. And then the five basic things that I'm going to commit to every single day. 2012, it shifts. What were the five things? Uh, five things were show up at eight, which is unheard of to this mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Like nobody's at a real estate office at yep. eight o'clock. Yep. Number two was make 20 contacts a day on mm -hmm. the phone. Yeah. 
circle dialing, Fizbo's expired. Whatever. Yeah. Number three, I was going to start doing something I'd never done before, which was knocking doors. I was mm-hmm. very comfortable over the phone. Yeah. Felt like throwing up at the doors. Yeah. 50 doors a day, 250 a week, 1,000 doors a month. Mm-hmm. And uh, number four was 10 LFU and mm-hmm. SOI contacts mm-hmm. a day. Mm-hmm. And number five was two. LFU is lead follow up. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, and yeah. number two is uh, two seller visits a day. Yeah. So there's all these people who have their hand up. Mm-hmm. Fizbo, divorce, mm-hmm. default, yeah. whatever it may yeah. be, I'm going to go to two of those a day and yeah. I'm going to stick to this. Yes. And 2012 was like, fortunately, my wife wait, waited for me and I, we got married that year yeah. and um, earned about 275, which was the most I'd ever earned before. Double, right? Like close to double? Yep. Um, 2013, I just was like, can I do this again? 2012, yeah. I felt like I just had some angels watching over me. Yeah. I just lost my best friend and my dad. I got lucky. Can I do this again? 310. Isn't it amazing how that self-doubt creeps yeah, in? Even for though sure. you did all the work. You, totally. like, you were like, no. you were like, whatever, grind, hustle. You know, you, you followed your plan. You executed on the plan. You doubled. And yeah. yet we still have self-doubt. There was one little thing as well that's in that. And I had never really branded myself. So my friends thought I worked at my best friend's clothing company, LRG. Yeah. They actually thought I was a life coach. And I didn't sell real estate to my sphere of influence, which was one of my goals. Yeah. So in 2012, this thing came out and I'm like, this is going to be my thing. This yeah. is how I'm gonna tell the world that I'm in real estate. Yeah. And that was Instagram. Yeah. And I think March, February, March, I do a deal with the epitome of the individual that I had written down. Because in that January, 2012, I was like, I'm gonna sell homes to skaters, mid-century modern, contemporary homes. I'm going to work my sphere. I'm going to do deals with the young and successful. In the in my whole career, I had only sold one home above a million dollars, and that was three years prior, right? So this was a very big deal. In Q1 2012, I said, I'm going to sell a home above two million bucks. That's cool, contemporary, mid-century modern, da 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 Probably a month after I write the vision, this guy calls me who I sold a home to in 2004 for 700 FHA financing, pro skater. And he's like, Kev, you still in real estate? I'm like, yeah, dude, what's up? I had a good year last year. He owned a clothing company. I think I could buy a home. I'm like, please say two, please say two. He's like around 1.5. I'm like, I'll take it. I haven't yeah. done a million dollar home right, in right. three years. Yes. Um, we start home shopping and about a week into it, he's like, hey dude, I just talked to my accountant. I'm like, shit, he's gonna tell me we gotta go down to 900. He's like, I could go to 2.5. I sell my first home above, it was a $2.5 million sale in Studio City, mid-century modern, contemporary, like it was, it was the vision. Everything you said. He had 10,000 followers on Instagram at that time, which in 2012 was- Huge. Post the photo, thanks at Kevion. Yeah. Game over. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it just starts to grow. 2014, I earned 725. And 2015, I earned a million fifty. And so I, I achieved the five year goal in four years. And then 2006, uh, 2016, I think was the first year we did over 100 million volume. And then that's when we started to look at should we just create our own company? Took three more years, but that's. That's the journey right there. That was that that at least takes us to the, the 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 breakthrough moment of starting to think about making case an independent firm. So why did you do it? So the further I grew within the brokerage that I was with, the weirder things started to feel. Mm-hmm. It was like I was bringing more to the table and I felt like I was having things taken away. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that had anything to do with the home base of the firm, which was Keller Williams based out of Austin. Amazing company. Mm-hmm. It was the way it was ran on a local level, Yeah, which the, you know, I'm in Newport Beach and Costa Mesa. Um, it just, it, it wasn't feeling right, you know, and they were consistently trying to hire my top producers to manage their company. It was weird. And I was just, you know, you have to just kind of trust your instincts. And the reason why we don't pursue big goals naturally is because of that F word, fear, Mm -hmm. right? False Mm -hmm. evidence Evidence appearing appearing real. real. And the new acronym is, you know, face everything and rise. Mm -hmm. So 
what did I have to lose? If it didn't work, yeah. I'll just go back to KW. It's right. all good. Right. And so we start to go through the motions and we just go for it. And perfect timing to become an independent straight, brand. Straight into the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we became independent August 2019. Um, we, 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 we then start searching for the dream location. Mm-hmm. My wife found it on Newport Boulevard. So when you... You yeah. exit, you're traveling to, to Orange County, yeah. you're going to the beach, you're going to exit the 55, yep. which turns, you're going to see Tom Ferry's building on the right, right? About a mile after that, the 55 freeway is going to turn into Newport Boulevard, 85,000 cars a day. Yeah. Bam, my wife finds that space. We get the keys December 2019. It's a shell, so we have to build it. No problem. We got three months. We'll have our big grand opening March of 2020. 2020. Yeah. And it was off to the races. I wouldn't have it any other way. No way. Because when you get squeezed, you find out what you're made of. Yeah. Right? And I can, uh, until I die, every day that I wake up, I know I got more fight in me. So I've been through it, man. I have been through enough battles to learn. And to this day, it's sure on my Instagram, it looks like it's just a big party. Yeah. It's. 80% 80% a battle, 20% a party. Mm-hmm. We just, you know, you want to keep your social light and fun and inspiring. I right. don't put the battles on there. But yeah. behind the scenes, anybody who knows me knows I am an open book of the battles I've, I've had to go through. And that's the big thing I want to encourage people is don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. I'm yeah. a 23-year overnight success. When did you choose sobriety? Uh, I began starting to get sober the year after I lost my best friend and my dad, which I lost both of them because of the same reasons I was getting sober. You know, my father really drank himself to death. And you would think that when that happened, it would automatically- Trigger, yeah. No, I I went deeper. Yeah. So uh, it was really summer 2013 where, you know, the, the challenge is- like my counselor told me, you are a professional rager, right? I started partying when I was 12, 13, when my dad got out of prison. I did coke with my dad when, he, when I was 14. So it was normal for me. Yes. It was just, it's fun, right? Like that's what you do. And so 20 years of that, my counselor was like, look, you can, just like a professional baseball player, sure, you can kind of bunt. But Mm -hmm. you get yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time and you're going to hit a grand slam. Mm -hmm. And I started trying summer 2013. And so I'm like, all right, I'll go 90 days. And so I did it. See, I don't have a problem. So I can drink wine, drink some wine, da 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 And I could maintain, but then you catch me at the wrong place at the wrong time, I'm not coming home. And I did that for, so my best friend, uh, Cesar Vasquez, who runs my LA office, We've got sober at the same time. Mm-hmm. He's got 10 years. I've got seven. Yeah. So it took me three years of this. Okay, let Back me go six months. Yeah. You know, yeah. until you realize like, I have lots of friends and I can be around it. I don't have any problem being around it. Um, I have lots of friends who it's like a, almost a sport to them and they can enjoy it. And yeah, it's a little difficult that it has this power over me. But the bottom line is, I have received the scientific results that I need to know that if I go there, there is a good chance I'm gonna go here. Yeah. And that's just it. Right. You know, and so I think you have to reach a point where the I'm a numbers guy, right? When my life was a three and I drank and partied, I went to a 10. That's a seven point jump. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I started to chill out, my life naturally went to a seven. And so when I drank, well, I got a three point jump. But when I dropped, I got a four point drop. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, I'd guess, I'd guess even yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Just watching, just watching the trends, right? Yeah, you're right. Absolutely, actually. But Go even just going from a seven down to a three, it's it's so fascinating to just watch the like. I God, I just partied again too hard. Yeah. Right. These conversations I've had with people, and then they they slip back. They get depressed. Right. And it's hard to come yeah. out of that. Yeah. So so all of this, you're still running this team. So you're dealing with the highs and lows, like you're personally dealing with the highs and lows. And then you've got the highs and lows of your sales team. Yeah. How did you balance that? Oh man. 
did you balance out? Oh my goodness. That is the most difficult thing I've had to break through. And I feel like I just started breaking through that over the last couple of years because people didn't start leaving me until about 2016, 2017. The, the mm -hmm. team started to grow in 2013. Yes. Out, and that was just like, you go back on my Instagram, you're just going to see like these eight people mm -hmm. at this table and at KW. Half of those people weren't even licensed. Yeah. These were just people hitting me up off of Instagram, oh, come hang out. Yeah. And people would prospect with me. By the summer of 2014, we got our first female. Mm -hmm. And when we got our first female, Sharif Fawn, my sister, things became real. Because like I would have accountabilities that if you showed up to the office meeting at 8.01, my team meeting that I'm doing, you had to sit all morning with your shirt off, right? In the office at Keller Williams. with, And you can't explain anything to anybody. No. And so when Cherie joined, I was like, okay, well, that, that role <laughs> goes out the window. <laughs> Guys, we got to like watch our cursing. Right. You know. We got to be polite. So- I have this experience of 2014, 15, 16, 17, where we're growing the family. Things mm -hmm. are, we're, we're, we're moving up the ranks. Mm -hmm. By 2015, 16, we were like number one within KW from Encino to La Jolla. Mm -hmm. And um, all of a sudden, people start to leave. Not everybody, but they get recruited to other places yeah. as the yeah. thing grows. Mm -hmm. And every single time somebody left, it was like, I was going through a horrible breakup. Right. Because when they leave, they send a text also, yeah. which is great. Yeah, it's a great way to break yeah. up with somebody. Yeah, who changed your life. Yeah. And um, it was very, 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 very hurtful. I was like- And then if it was on a day post mm -hmm. or a weekend post, yeah, man, that's a spiral. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why am I even doing this? I'm going to yeah. shut this whole thing down. Screw these people. I'm going to fire my whole team. I'm just going to do this by myself. How many times did you spiral in and out of that? Um, with drinking or just mentally? Yes. Over a hundred. Yeah. I've had over a hundred people text me that they're going somewhere else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like, think of that. I know. I know. <laughs> um, in hey, 2000 I'm a CEO of a company. Dude. I understand. And it's like, we, you know, I, I, I loaned you money. I gave you a car. I, I, I went to court for you for the- and, and, None and, of that matters. No. Everybody's doing the best. That, yes. I'm sorry. How do you interpret it? Because I know how, I know the story I play in my head. How I did? Yeah. I'll tell you the breakthrough. Yeah. So how tell I me. did yeah. is nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Mm -hmm. uh, all this is a waste of time, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Right. And right. the way I interpret it now is they've graduated to where they need to get to next. And I got to be a part of that. Thank I God. have so many text messages till from this day. Mm -hmm. Now, this still happens, mm -hmm. right? Hey, Kev, da, da, da. I love you. I'm always here for you. Thank you so much for the time that you've given me. Yeah. I got your back. Yeah. I don't care if they're leaving real estate or going to Compass or Coldwell or wherever. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the time that you gave me. Yep. I welcome them back to our run club. We do a run club uh, the last Saturday of every month at Case. I just saw this kid who came to our first run club last week and I could tell because he left. I could tell, dude, how are you? And truly, yeah. there's nothing. Yeah. Because I've realized that my journey as a coach, as a mentor, mm -hmm. as a leader is to, to speak into people the way you spoke into me and not be attached to me receiving anything from them. Yes. This is their journey. That's it. Yeah. That's, that is the hardest. It's thing been the people. hardest thing right. for me to grasp. Right. It, yeah. It's hard for everybody. I mean, every list, every, every leader right now listening and, and you could be a, uh, you know, a solo entrepreneur. Yeah. And you can think about it as a client, a friend, right? Someone yeah. that you just fell out with, right? Like it's the same thing. Like we get so emotionally attached to it. And I remember, I, I forget who, I, it had to be like Mike Vance or someone that just pulled me aside and just said, hey man, everybody's on everybody's on their path. Yeah. Like he didn't say it that way because Mike would see, he would say it differently, but that was the essence of the message. Right. And I remember saying to myself, like, you know, I was already running this company and I was like, okay, so- so I just want to be the best CEO I can be and, and recognize that everybody's going to do their thing. Everybody's on their path. Just like, Hey, I left my dad. Right. 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 Like, I, like yeah. who, who am I to say anything yeah. bad in my yeah. head or heaven forbid out loud about anybody that made the choice? I left my pops. I left right. a family business. I left right. 145 employees that were all like my family. Right. right. So, so like, I just, I just find grace in it now. It's like, okay, like I don't like it. Right. There's still that moment, but I'm like, okay, give myself like a five second pity pop party. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, man, they're on their path. Let's go. And that's can I write you a letter of endorsement? How, you know, can how I write a review? quickly? 
how quickly can we get through that storm? And yes. that's the, the that's yeah. the big one. Is I think that's one of the secret weapons. Is yeah. I can take a punch and keep it moving quickly it. because okay. there's too much. Right. Yeah. There's too many punches. Yeah. So if yeah. you let one stop you. Right. Okay. We have got we've we've not got through one of my questions, and I'm already so stoked that we're <laughs> doing go. this. Okay. So let let's 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 get granular on some let's people right now. What's the playbook for this market? What, Honestly, how are you getting listings? What are you doing to do so many deals? What's the playbook? Like, what are you and your coach now working on? Like what you started with DC, how long ago? Shout out to David Caldwell. About a year. Yeah. Last July. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so Caldwell, like, I mean, I have 236 business coaches yeah. and I love every single one of them. DC texts me a lot. Right. So he's right. like, okay, I'm working with Kevin. Anything I need to know? And I'm yeah. like, dude, just ask him. He's an open book, yeah. right? Yeah. So what are you guys working on right now? So two things that, I, honestly, it's the same stuff we've been doing, but we're refining the craft. Mm -hmm. um, so meaning the, the prospecting numbers are all the same. Right. There's two big game changers that I've done and shifted over this last year within my team and mm -hmm. within our organization. Mm -hmm. The big one is solidifying everyone's farm and breaking down their farm into 12 maps. Yeah. So I okay. feel like I okay. feel like we've cracked the code here. Okay, so unpack this. So I have I have my my 11 Jedi's within Team Start event. Yeah. Right. And so each of my 11 Jedi's has mm -hmm. a farm between 2700 to 3300 homes. Yeah. I have specifically broken down those homes based on weeks, okay. right? So for example, Steven Sacedo, who's Venny Sacedo's son, works with me, he's killing it. He's like the number one dude on my team right now. One of his uh, pockets is Dover Shores, west of, uh, excuse me, east of Mariners, Yeah. right? So that, that pocket can be broken down into two farms, mm -hmm. uh, two weeks, two maps, whatever you wanna call it. And he knows specifically where he needs to be every single week. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean you get a buyer who wants to look in Rancho Palos Verdes, mm. Palos Verdes, whatever it is, but you had better go and be on the doorsteps of that map. 68% of consumers when they list with an agent list because of proximity. Yeah. So you're just playing the proximity game. That's it, yeah. At a very um, specific and detailed, I don't wanna leave yeah. any, as a leader, I don't want them to have to think about anything. Yeah. Here's what you have to do, because if they don't have to think about what they're doing, then I get to focus on who they're being. Yes. And I get to focus on the story, mm -hmm. the lie, the BS, the yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But if they're doing both, they gotta first figure out who the hell they are and they have to figure out where the hell they're going. Right. The least I could do is show them exactly where they need to go. So I have this uh, this, uh, this group of 11 mm -hmm. and they each have 12 maps. Mm -hmm. So if Steven knows he's gonna be um, in that th those seven streets mm -hmm. east of Mariners mm -hmm. in Dover Shores, mm -hmm. month one, week one, Guess, and that's January. Guess yeah. when he's back there? That's April, yeah. week one. And we have mm -hmm. the whole thing laid out. I've been working on this for like a year and a half. So every door gets a knock, a drop, a something once a quarter. Yes. So you started this a year ago. Yeah. How's it working out? So honestly, we are just fine tuning it with the title company. Mm -hmm. It's taken way longer than I mm -hmm. thought, but mm -hmm. I would say it, it feels pretty special. Yeah. yeah, it feels pretty magical. The team loves it. Mm -hmm. and Why do they love it? I think they love it because they're all going like this. Where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? Yeah. And they need clarity. And it's my job as a leader to, to not let them go off in too many different places. Mm -hmm. Again, you have a buyer who wants to, to, to buy something in Palisades, go. But you have 250 homes that need to see you on their ring cam. Hey, how are you? Yeah. You know, they need to see you. And yeah. if you do that, you will dominate. We will be a billion dollar team next year. Yeah. So my experience, and I know, you, you know, we have so, so many of our longtime clients, like, yeah. you know, all TF longtime clients are all like, okay, past client sphere, geo farm, digital, social, right? Like, but it's like past client sphere, geo farm, and all that like blends in with open houses right. and knocking on doors around. And today, you know, some will circle dial. Yes. 
Geofarming always and forever has been in my heart as one of the best ways to do business because it's just a natural extension yeah. of your past clients and sphere. Like, totally. And by the way, I hate the word past. Your clients mm, and your sphere, that's good. right? Because what you're playing is, and you know, your coach and I were literally just in this dialogue. It's what we're talking about at the summit. Yeah. It's, it's homes under management, mm. right? So if you took 2,700 homes, right? Uh, east of Mariners, right. I'm guessing the average sales price is 2 million bucks. I don't yeah. know what... 2 million times 2,700 is, but right. that's your homes under management. Oh yeah. And my job is to just be in front of them as a resource to yeah. give CMAs, to give updates, to create a relationship. And that's how you win listings. That was probably one of the best things that I got from my coaching with DC was to take the position of the advisor. Yes. Like yep. people, what he said, he said, people flex their financial advisor. Yes. Why don't they flex their real estate agent? Yeah. You, you want to have this mindset that even if they're never going to move, hey, have you taken the, and one, one of the scripts was, has anyone taken, you don't need to ask anybody if they have a real yeah, estate agent. Yeah. You need to ask them, has anyone taken the time to sit with you and take a look at what your, 220, your 2023 home value is yes. and where it's going for next year? If they say no, they don't have a real estate agent. Bingo. It's seven months into the year, right? If they say no, they don't have an agent. You know who wrote that question? Patrick. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was That's a Patrick. Awesome. That was a Patrick Ferry yeah. drop. Like, what was that? Like three that years ago, I think, on a podcast. He's like, has anyone taken the time to yeah. show you? And then you can fill it in with anything. Yeah. Has anybody, the rules of buying a house right. today, the strategy around it, you know, your current home value, just that has anyone taken the time? And you're exactly right. It just, they don't have anybody. Well, it feels weird being in the presence of somebody who wants to get something from you right yes. away. Yeah. And so, you know, just before I came here, um, we now have training that goes on within our office and Joshua Bush is now one of the guys that's kind of training new agents that come in. Yeah. And I'm literally about to run out the door and he goes, okay, I've got anything for these guys on rapport and I can't help but stop. Yeah, I can't help but share yeah. some insight with them. And number one was don't be attached, mm -hmm. be present. Don't be attached, be present. Don't bring anything to the conversation. Yes. Yeah. What I mean by that is when you are just present, you're not bringing the past, you're not bringing your goals, you're not bringing your agenda. You're just, hey, how are you? How's it going? Mm -hmm. There's no agenda, mm -hmm. there's no weird thing. Yeah. And that's where the magic is. Yeah. Think of your very first date with your, with your loved one, time disappeared. That's my biggest challenge when I go door knocking is people who don't want to sell invite me into their home and want to just hang out. And I have, you know, so one of the things I have to do is, oh my gosh, shoot, I got to get going. Um, I, I want to do this because I do want to walk through their house. For sure. I just yes. also have to send these invites out. Yeah. So, um, and that's the magic is if you can let go of this attachment that you need to sell their house. Yeah. No, that's weird. That's like, if you don't do that, that's being on a blind date, expecting to get married tomorrow. Yes. Just let go and be present. Yeah. Yeah. So last year, $265 million in sales, right? You and the team. And that's not that's not the brokerage. Right. That's just you yeah, and the, the team, brokerage right? Was another, little, it was 430. Okay, another yeah. 85 agents, yeah. congrats. Um, so, so you start this big endeavor, right? Hey, we're gonna do this like kind of homes under management, planning to yeah. David Caldwell and I's. Yeah. And it's funny that David's a, a skater, but he was a punk. Uh, yeah, I was planning on talking to three people. Yeah. And then he told me that he could 360 flip. And I was like, damn, you're my guy. <laughs> he told me he could 360 flip. And then he knew a little bit about Wu-Tang. And I'm like, you're good. You're my yeah, coach. Okay, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> let's go. So, all right. How do you stop teammates? I, in, my, in my second book, I wrote about uh, the four addictions. And one of the biggest addictions is the addiction to the past, mm. right? That we get, we get so stuck in whether you want to call it sunk cost thinking or just our confirmation bias yeah. that we just, we just have a knowing that there is no other way, mm. right? We just, we can't see the other side. Think of like right. today in politics, right? Like they, they're all wrong, right? Cause yeah. nobody can listen to anybody, right? right? Like everybody's wrong, right? Yeah. But I look at it as a leader and I ask the question and I want, I want to know your insight on this. You've got, you've got teammates that are addicted to the unicorn mm. years of mm. what it was like to sell real estate at the end of 2020, all of 2021, some of 2022, and they just have this attachment to the way it used to be. Right. How do you help them get over that and get into today's market? I think the numbers are really important. 
So I love the numbers. And when you can, and, and the fact that I've been through some of these challenging years. So for example, when we went through like the city of Costa Mesa, I believe for the first six months of the year uh, in the city of Costa Mesa, there was something like 280 sales. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first six months of 2023, yeah. there was something like 190. Mm -hmm. uh, in every single area, when I went back and went back and went back, and I just did this in our team meeting, nine different cities, it was about 25, 30% less sides. Now, mm -hmm. not less price, which is good to know, yeah. but less sides and almost double the days on market. So we have less sales going on that are taking twice as long. Mm -hmm. The scarier thing is when we go back to 2021. Mm -hmm. It's insane. First six months is like 400 sales. So from, from 2021, it's like 50% less sales. Mm -hmm. So if there's 100 here and 10 people going after it, imagine what it's like when there's still the 10 people and now there's only 50. You had better turn up. So I think it's just being very, very straight up with them about the reality of the market mm -hmm. um, and knowing that you had better be really good and just telling them straight up that they're not going to make it. Hey, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you don't make these changes, then consider getting a job, right? Because you, you might as well make low money than no money. Mm -hmm. And you, a job, keep in mind, stands for just over broke, but you're going to be broke, Mm -hmm. Do you want to be just over broke or broke? Or you can be abundant, but in order to be abundant, this is what you have to do. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to make it if you don't make any changes. Mm -hmm. And just having that conversation with them one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. not in a group. For sure. I've learned to not have any gnarly conversations no in a group. Like, I love you. You have what it takes. Based on this and what I'm seeing, you... If, if this is what you're gonna do, mm -hmm. just get a job. Go to the, your family's company, mm -hmm. UPS might be hiring, I don't know, but you ain't gonna make it here. Or this is what you gotta change. And it might have nothing, I have a guy who, it, he's doing all the right things, but there's some internal stuff. And that we spend a lot of time on that at Case. You know, again, we don't get what we want, we get who we are. I can't change who you are. Right? I can change what you do, but mm -hmm. this is not a doing game. Mm -hmm. This is a being game. Mm -hmm. And you gotta have both. You know, there's a lot of people like, you know, you look you, you look at Paul and, and guys like that, they're not out door knocking. Mm -hmm. He's just a magnet to it. He has put himself in the space yep. where he is just gonna attract those monster deals. Yep. I'm like, damn, he did another 20 million. Okay, so I just saw him in the gym this yeah. morning and, and you know, big hug. What's up, bro? Yeah. Like, you know, just hanging out. He's just, you know, sweetheart of a human. And he's like, I'm like, how's it going, man? He's like, you know, overnight success, man. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like do something for 12 years. Yeah. He's like, and then finally you become the guy. And I'm like, yeah. you know, guy, gal, doesn't make it. Or you were willing to do yeah. the work. So what do you say to that? young guy who is doing the work, but clearly his being choices, like who, how he shows up, yeah. the story inside his head, right. all these conversations, right? I remember like watching Tony Robbins a million years ago. You can knock on doors and be like, you don't want to sell your house, do you? Right. He goes, no one ever says that, yeah. but that's how you show up. Right. That's how people right. hear you. Right. What do you say to that person? Because someone listening right now is like, like they don't know it, but they know like inside, I used to always call it like the energy sucking vampire. Yeah. Like you walk in the room and all the living plants go. Eh, right. Right. Cause that's just, that's the energy you bring in. Yeah. How do you get them to work on that? I think you have to encourage them to dig deeper. Like there's only so, we can only go so deep. Is that mm -hmm. one of my other phones? Sorry about that. In case you're wondering if this is a live show. <laughs> Sorry. How many phones do you have, Ben? <laughs> two. two. Two phones and an <laughs> iPad? <laughs> so... <laughs> You want a Palm Pilot? <laughs> <laughs> so I think you, so let's do that how do you, question how again. Do you, how, do you help, how do you help the person shift from, like the way I describe it all the time is I say, what we want is greatness, Yeah. right? What a lot of people, well, I'll start here. A lot of people start out at dis-ease, mm. right? Mm. And then they get very satisfied when they move to wellness because at Ooh. least they're not in a state of dis-ease. Yeah. But I'm like, wellness is a slippery slope, right? Yeah. Like you can very quickly fall back, but when you strive for greatness and greatness is not me versus you, it's right. me versus me. Right. It's, it's, it's me being my best every day. Yeah. And so I can rest at night knowing that like I, I gave enough today mm. to feel satisfied, yeah. right? It's, it's the acknowledgement that it doesn't matter 
what's going on in the world? This is what I say to myself right. all the time. No one cares. Yeah. Didn't sleep well last night. No one cares. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, had a had a bad, you know, whatever experience. Missed a flight. World's falling apart. Right. You know, making payrolls hard. No one yeah. cares. Yeah, because everybody expects me to show up. Hey, come on, dance, 100%. Tom Ferry, dance. Absolutely, right? Yeah. And as soon as I got that, like that for me is greatness. It's, and and maybe it's a little sick because I know actually people care, right? Yeah. My wife certainly cares. Yeah. Right. But when I said to myself, I'm going to choose greatness, then it was like, now how do I evaporate or eliminate? Is a better word. Everything mm. that keeps me in a state of disease, right, or where I get stuck at wellness, mm. yeah. So I think it's two things, right? I think number one is you have to have a commitment to personal development and self growth. Yeah. No matter how much we yeah. show you the tech and the scripts and the dialogues mm -hmm. and the farm, mm -hmm. if you have not gotten right within, mm -hmm. right, like I kept self sabotaging. Yeah. I had all. I had the best mentors. From you to Tony Robbins mm -hmm. to Thatch, like I could not have asked for a better runway to be mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. Why was I self sabotaging? Because I had deep rooted issues about self worthiness. Mm -hmm. And until I dig deep in those through counseling, I did the whole landmark curriculum twice. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's long weekends. Yeah. Digging deep and trying to figure out what is going on, when you look at the word information, you can break that down to information. So I had 20 years of false information that had made me who I was in a lot of funky soil. Mm -hmm. I had to clean up that soil and, and, and develop new soil and get right. So that's number one. Yeah. There's only so far, I can only go so far with you in these sessions because right. in your sessions, I'm going to go one on one. I'm going to go uh, farm numbers. I'm going to be able to hint a little bit on your deal. And, but it's more like, like this individual I was working with yesterday. Call this person, call this person. And these were two deep rooted NLP coaches. Go invest, mm -hmm. go find mm -hmm. the money and mm -hmm. go invest with mm -hmm. this guy. Yeah. And he will get in here. Number yeah. two is what's your why? Yeah. What's your why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? One of the biggest challenges is I can get people to 250. I've had so many people that I've gotten to 250. 250, bam. They got no kids, 250. House, Porsche, Rolex, you made it. Yeah. You're 24 years old, 250. Yeah. And after 250, bam. Um, and it, I'm, I'm actually watching that happen this year. Three of my star players last year, are having tough years this year. And what happens is, you know, one of my, my favorite individuals, he told me straight up, he's like, dude, I wanted the car, I wanted the house, I wanted the watch, and he got it. Dopamine rush, dopamine rush, <laughs> dopamine rush. It's all the journey, right? That's the dopamine rush. Then you get it and you're like, now yes. what? So, and so no more purpose, yeah. no more drive. Yeah. And we are now digging deep into what's the bigger vision. Yeah, you know, for me, yeah. I, I I've been on freaking fire. I have very low moments where I hit a six. I am in a seven and a half to eight and a half nine all the time. Mm -hmm. There's occasional moments where I go to a six, and I can feel it, and I know how to snap myself out mm -hmm. of it. And I have my life hack of mm -hmm. I call it recognize, realize, and recreate. Yeah. I can feel it when I'm in a six. I know, and I go through my, my my program. It's recognize, catch it, oh shit, I'm in a six, why? Oh, that person said that thing. Ugh. And so my part two is realize, I call it realize the real lies. Okay, what's truth? Truth is the deal fell apart. What's the lie? Lie is um, you're a loser, you suck, uh, no one's ever gonna- the business uh, is hard, you're never gonna- yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. cool. How do we wanna recreate that? This is the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. Yeah. Thank you for that person. I'm developing clarity. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Back up. Are we back up? Yep. Seven plus. Let's go. So I have this this life hack that I go mm -hmm. through that I mm -hmm. don't I don't touch a six. I am seven up plus all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's powerful. That's that's greatness. Yeah. That's greatness. It's it's getting out of wellness, and a lot of people just get so complacent talking about your guys like. Mm -hmm. I see it everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And it's the, it's the, I always go back and say, hey man, when your business or your life is in a state of dis-ease, yeah. are you doing the work? Right. And they go, man, I'm making the calls. I go, no, nah, nah. are you doing the work on you? Yeah. And doing the work. Yeah. It's that combo all the time. And you look at 
some of the some of the tragedy that's happening around the world. And you right. look and say, man, I'll, I'm just asked to like maybe do some gratitudes every day. Mm. Maybe like unpack some lies from my past yeah. and make some phone calls. That's yeah. all I got to do. No one's, yeah. bombing. no one's bombing me. Right. You know what I mean? Like I really like, like getting people to realize that, but all right. Clean it, got clean it up. You know, you you, and it, sometimes it's, it's, it's down there. I, I had to fire my first like player in 2020. Yeah. It was tough. You know, typically people are texting me to leave. I've never had to, uh, fire somebody, yeah. especially somebody that I was considered their mentor. And that was hard. And when that person left, a group left with course, them. Yeah. And like a year and a half ago, I was just like, ooh, I was just thinking about one person, not even him. I was like, oh, that is some bad feelings there. Let me make the call. I made the call and I was just like, hey, I just want you to know that uh, I, I'm sorry for any feelings you may have felt here. And I want you to know that I'm proud of you and that I'm always here for you. And if you ever need anything and did my best to just clean that up, never got a call back and that's okay. Yeah. I just know where I am and how I'm relating to that individual and that moment in time. Yeah. And so got to clean any of those things up. Um, but yeah, you know, it, and for me, it's, I love the craft when I officially got sober, it was the year after I made a million dollars. And it was because I fell hard uh, in April, four months after I made the mill. 2015, mm -hmm. first year I made a million bucks, bought my dream home. I got asked to speak at Mega Camp in front of 10,000 people. I, yeah. um, I called Thatch and bought his car from him. And for the first time, I'm shipping his car from Seattle yeah. here. Yeah. All these things that I felt were the things that I've always wanted that were going to make me whole and complete. You'd arrived. Yeah. December 2015, I'm looking at my family in the Philippines on a private island. Kaizen, Eli, Azela, my wife, right? I had, I had three kids at that time. Mm -hmm. Now I have five. And I'm looking at them in the same photo that I had on my vision board, except I see my family now. And I woke up at five in the morning the next day and I went and pounded a beer. And I had been like six months sober at that time. And I get home in January and I kind of started smoking again. And I, it starts to come back. And then April 2016, the year after my big breakthrough, case is like number one and blah, blah, blah. Um, I could have ended it all in April 27th, 2016. I was up at three in the morning going all in and i i just remember my heart feeling like it was going to explode and just praying to god get me through this night and i promise i'm done and i told alana what i'd done the night before and i said i'll do whatever i need to do and we got right we go to church we dig deep um and the big eye opener was that all the things all the worldly things i ever wanted the success the accolades car house all this stuff that i thought was going to make me the man who i've always wanted to be means nothing, nothing. without my core relationship with god and mm -hmm. without my mental health and without my spiritual health and since that moment i have been building yes on my business for sure but building the most on how do I how do I elevate physically? Let's do an Ironman. All right, I'll, I did an Ironman yeah, last yeah. year. How do I elevate with my wife? Let me one hundred percent commit to this time. How do I elevate as a father? How do I elevate my mindset? Um, and how you are in one area is how you are everywhere. And so I directly um, contribute the growth of Case through the growth that I've done. Uh, with myself, with my mind, body, soul, and family. You know, if you're growing and elevating there, you show up to work and you're like, let's go mm -hmm. because you're already wealthy. So I think sometimes you have to get all the other make-believe wealth that you think matters yeah. to realize that's not where it's at. Doesn't mean you can't have both though, because I'm shooting for the moon in case. Let's yeah. not get it twisted. We yeah. have some huge goals of being a $10 billion company, but I'm not interested in achieving being a 10 billion dollar company at the cost of at my the sacrifice family. of yeah, not happening. or your health not happening right yeah. right yeah let's end on that let's go man let's dude i'm go. so proud of you thank you bro yeah yeah you've been a game changer in my life you know um to to have the opportunity to be exposed and be led um and and 
everybody needs that person to show them that is possible. So just know that the people I'm impacting are, you know, widely because of the peop the, the way you impacted me and the way you spoke life and possibility into me. I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just, I'm just paying it forward, dude. Doing That's what it. you did for me. That's it. I'm proud of you, man. Thank I'm you, bro. You. All Thank right. you. Hey, so as you're watching this, first of all, you follow him on Instagram. I love his line around. It's, you know, it's like, you know, 80% of the fun, like the behind the scenes stuff I'm grinding and it's, it's not always pretty, <laughs> uh, but just thank you. I can't wait. Uh, your son's going to be on the panel. That's the insane. Summit. That's super bananas. That's insane. I know. Full circle, right? Full wow. circle. I'm going to have to send one of my sons to come work for you. Like we could like, Dude, we could really go I'm blown full away circle. at that kid. It's really, really special. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. You, All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. You probably have a friend or two that needs to see this. Uh, I would send it to him ASAP and maybe add a little note that says, I love you. And I really think you get some value out of this because I know they will. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Man. Thank you, bro.